This article appeared on the 23rd of July 1914 in the Korean Courier and is titled A Mountain Tragedy. Gallant attempt to bring a sick man to hospital, over 50 miles in a bush ambulance, patient dies on the road. It is about Jack Riley, the man from Snowy River. Anyone with any experience of the Kosciuszko country will easily realise the difficulties that face five bushmen on Tuesday morning, the 14th of this month, when they set out from Tom Grogan to bring a hopeless and half unconscious mate to the Koryong Hospital. For those who are unacquainted with this part of the state, it may be mentioned that Tom Grogan is a cattle station in the heart of the mountains, about 50 miles up the Murray from Koryong. It lies right at the foot of Kosciuszko and is only accessible by pack tracks. The route in general uses cro use crosses into New South Wales at Bringenbrong and follows the Swamp River Valley through Gihai, crossing the river several times. It then crosses the divide between Mount Granule and Mount w Wallace, back onto the main river just below Grogan. The other track keeps to the Victorian side all the way, is shorter and there are no rivers to cross. But in transversing the precipitous Indy Gorge, some very rough country is met with and the grades in place are hair raising. Practically all the mountain roads meet in Grogan, and it is the only point from which the ascent of Kosciuszko can be made from the Murray Valley. For nearly 30 years, John Riley has lived in Grogan and for some time has been in charge of Mr J Pierce's cattle station, which comprises most of the good land there. Familiar with every inch of the head of the river country, he has given willing assistance to numerous numbers of tourists passing through and was better known than probably any other man on the mountains. A fearless and dashing horseman in his young days, a first-class hand among stock, and with all an Irishman's open-handed generosity, he was liked and respected by all who knew him. In bushcraft, even among the experts of the Murray, Gippsland and the Monaro, he stood alone, and it is said that some of his exploits form the basis of Patterson's well-known verse on the man from Snow River. Your bushman is ever a philosopher, and life had many compensations for Jack. See here, my boy, he would say as he coaxed his horse off the track around a fallen tree. There's never a tree falls in this country, but it falls on the bloody track. Gifted with the bushman's unerring sense of locality, he had a supreme contempt for the compass and delighted to relate his experience with a party of city tourists which visited Grogan some years ago. The weather was treacherous and Jack offered to guide the party up to the top. They told him that there was no necess necessity to come as they had a good compass. Foggy weather set in and two days afterwards a party of bedraggled pedestrians returned to Grogan with only one desire in the world to get back to civilization. Old Jack never said a word. He gave them a feed and a drink of tea and catching his horse led them out over the divide and put them on the Jihai track for home. One of the tourists said he would like to recompense him and offer Jack five shillings. Jack refused to take it. His reward was greater than that. Thirty years intimate acquaintance with Kosciuszko had made him familiar with all the mountain's many moods, and if he warned a tourist that he, it was a bad day to try the ascent, the warning was well worth paying attention to. Advancing years and a rough life had been telling upon Jack lately, but he refused to leave his mountain, except for a brief visit to civilization now and again. Word reached Coriol on Saturday that his condition was serious and some of his friends decided to bring him down to Coriong to the hospital. With this object, Mr W. H. Finlay, a well-known Kosciuszko guide, went up to Grogan on the Sunday to bring him in. Rain fell all day Monday, but the stretcher was Im improvised and arrangements made for a start next morning. Mr A. and J. McGuinness, F. Jarvis and R. Butler assisting. 
About 9.30 on Tuesday, the party left the Grogan hut, carrying Riley on the stretcher, the men taking turns about at the handles and leading pack horses with provisions and blankets and a pony hack. The first four or five miles down the valley was negotiated without much trouble, but when it became necessary to climb out of the gorge over the shoulder of the Hermit's Hill, the real difficulties began. The track ascends through wild hop scrub scrub, and rocks nearly 2,000 feet and the party soon found that the task was beyond them. To make matters worse, snow began to fall and the cold became intense. In all difficulties, the bushman turned to his horse and a mountain pony provided the solution of this one. Riley was lifted into the saddle and Butler, the lightest of the party, mounted behind him. Straps were put in the D's and Butler held these and supported the half unconscious man. Two of the others worked alongside him, holding him in place and the long ascent was successfully made. Snow was thick on the ground as they climbed out on the top of the spur and more was falling, but the party pushed on and descended into the Hermit's Creek late in the afternoon. The stretcher had then to be brought into use again, and just at dark the party reached Surveyor's Creek Junction, where a deserted mining hut provided shelter for the night. Mr Jarvis went up to the creek to the tin mine and arranged for assistance in the morning, and the others made a fire and installed the patient as comfortably as possible in front of it. He seemed to rally a little and spoke to his friends, but the weakness reasserted itself and shortly afterwards he swayed over and would have fallen had his mates not saved him. The journey was over as far as old Jack was concerned. The game old heart had ceased to beat and out there among the great silent trees with the rain falling softly on the roof of the hut, his spirit went home for its long rest. Next morning, a party from the tin mine, including Mr. R. and F. Mackenzie, A. and L. Murant, and W. Lyne, came down the creek, and with their assistance, the body was carried the eight miles into Bunroy in a little over four hours. Assistance was also given here to Mr. W. H. Whitehead. Four miles further on, Mr. R. Finlay and Mr. E. Pendergast met them with a buggy, and just before midnight on Wednesday, the last stage of the journey was complete and Corion was reached. An inquiry was held on Thursday, and the deputy cor- coroner, Mr. A. Cox, returned a verdict of death from heart failure in accordance with the medical testimony. The last act of the drama was enacted on Thursday afternoon when the body of the old bushman was interred in the Coryong Cemetery in the presence of his mates and a few friends. Mr. D. J. Croman reading the burial service of the Roman Catholic Church at the grave. The bush asked big things of its men and they never failed to respond. Sometimes, as in this case, the task provides proves impossible and a higher power intervenes but the credit of a gallant attempt is theirs and there are some failures which are finer than many successes.